Now, this week, a number of finance companies put a stop to investors taking money out of property funds. Now, most of these funds have a certain amount of cash ready to pay out investors who want to sell. But if too many want their money back, the funds have to sell properties to raise the cash. Anyone who has bought or sold property can tell you this takes time. So they've frozen the funds until the money has been raised. What, though, does this mean for the property market as a whole in the United Kingdom and possibly elsewhere? With me is housing expert Henry Pryor. Henry, these funds now, they're all desperately out there trying to sell property. So it's trying to sell commercial property, which makes up these funds so they can pay the investors who want to get out of the funds. Jamie, that's the problem. And what we don't know and what we're all worried about is whether this becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. At the end of the day, if people are having to uh, commit in almost fire sale uh, circumstances commercial property into the open market in order to liquidate those properties, in order to pay investors who are uh, only heading to the exit on, from the basis of sentiment rather than necessarily reality. We know that the commercial property market was already under pressure before the referendum at the end of June. But will this become, as I say, a self-fulfilling prophecy? Will commercial property values tumble? And therefore, is there actually a legitimate reason, or are they going to define one themselves? Are there buyers out there? There are buyers. I mean, a lot of people have been saying very cheap pound, great bargain for foreign investors who want to come in and buy a property at a 10 15% discount. Well, it does make a difference, and certainly if, uh, overseas buyers, both for commercial property in the UK and residential property in the UK, have a massive advantage now post-Brexit. The question is, we've been sending out politically a very uncomfortable message about uh, foreign buyers b purchasing in the UK. We've made it much more expensive for them to, to buy. We've made it more expensive for them Why to hold property. So oh. higher stamp duty rates, for example, uh, capital gains tax, new rules on ATED for those holding property in corporate structures. And investors, both, in, as I say, in commercial property and residential property, are also seeing beamed around the world some of the less attractive elements of the British psyche post-Brexit, which I'm afraid is causing many to now consider really? whether they do want to come to the well, United Kingdom. A kind Kingdom. of anti-foreigner anti feeling? Does there it, is, is that I'm really going into the market for, for, for property? I'm afraid I've already had calls from overseas clients, UK, uh, U uh, EU nationals, uh, South Americans, who are inevitably seeing in this age of 24-hour news uh, what is going on, some of the things, say, some of the less attractive and probably, that one hopes, exceptional things that are going on here. And it does send out a very uncomfortable message, and we must be careful about that. Are they, are, are they saying, I don't really want to buy in Britain because of that? No, they're asking whether they should. At this stage, we still have an opportunity to rein it in, and the excesses that we're seeing uh, are not clearly the message that everybody in this country wants to give out, but we must be careful of the signals. You're talking here largely about commercial property, aren't you? Is there a chance this may spill over? I mean, let, let us accept, say, that the prices will fall to a greater or lesser extent in commercial property. Will that spill over into uh, residential property? Inevitably, there is the danger. Uh, if you think about the headwinds that now face us, we've got five big uh, problems potentially coming at us as we proceed through the next six months, including a general election, uh, elections for leaders of the main political parties. These are all things that would ordinarily destabilise both the residential and commercial markets. Now, the important thing that we understand and that everybody keeps in mind is that those uh, elements are not yet infecting the wider market, and there is, this is something that's probably going to take time to play out. The important thing to remember is that people who wanted to buy, who wanted to transact before the 24th of June w are still able to do so. They've still got the money, but they do need an incentive. Okay. Henry Pryor, thanks very much indeed for that.